Tonight, we finish our Hampshire County series by talking to Todd Ford of the Hampshire Council of Governments about the economy of Hampshire County. This was taped at the Yiddish Book Center. So in Massachusetts in general, we spend a lot of money on electricity. Uh, we spend about uh, $80 billion uh, in electricity, and most of that money leaves the state. Uh, so it's kind of a gaping wound, I think, in our economy. Uh, what the towns and the cities of Western Mass are trying to do is combine their purchasing power uh, for electricity in order to bring down prices. Uh, some of the smaller towns, uh, the hill towns of Hampshire County and other areas in Western Mass are so small that by going out just by themselves, they're really not going to have that purchasing power. But if you start combining 5,000 in one town, 3,000 in another, 30,000 in another, you start getting up into some real numbers. And we're at about 150,000 people that would be going out at one time, bidding out their electricity in bulk, driving down the price so that they can bring those savings to the businesses and to the residents of their community. That process is called aggregation or municipal aggregation. Uh, in other parts of the country, it's called community choice. Uh, and basically what it means is the people of that community vote uh, to put their electricity uh, kind of out to market at one time in the hopes of better savings. Uh, all that process is coordinated through the Hampshire Council of Governments. Uh, and again, all that money will stay within the economy because we're a local nonprofit. And so any revenue gets reinvested into the economy and kind of it's a nice way to close that circle, which now is really broken with so much of our money going out of state for electricity. In Massachusetts, we were talking a little bit about this off camera, but Massachusetts is really getting hit hard by electricity rates because it's not the same in Chicago. I think you said their rates were, what, five cents? Five and a half cents, right. And in Massachusetts, it's... We'll be going to 11 pretty shortly, and it's only going to get worse. Uh, so we're at the end of the electricity pipeline, as it were. Uh, our electricity prices are directly uh, correspondent with natural gas prices, and they spike heavily in the winter. Uh, and the reason for that is because there aren't enough gas pipelines going to uh, the actual facilities that burn the gas for electricity. There's some proposals for gas pipelines, but they may or may not be going to the facilities that need them. They may be going for export, which does not help our electricity prices. So it's important to know with the gas pipelines that are proposed in, say, Franklin County, where is that gas going? Is it going to go to a plant that's going to burn it to bring down our electricity costs, or is it going to a, a port in Boston to be shipped out of seas? Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a very challenging aspect uh, of the Massachusetts economy. Uh, it is cited quite often as a barrier to economic growth, not only here in Hampshire County, but throughout the Commonwealth, our high electricity prices. So by combining that purchasing power, uh, you're going to be able to see some savings, not extravagant savings, but 10, 20 percent. Uh, and that money, again, would then help stay in the economy and allow us to kind of reinvest it with other programs and services that uh, try to save money. Now we may be a little bit, a few years away from it, but with the Tennessee gas pipeline coming through, it may impact Franklin County maybe a little bit more than Hampshire County. Are most people saying it'll help, it'll hurt? I mean, what's the... Uh, well, that's why I said it's important to know where that gas is gonna end up. Uh, not all pipelines are created equal. Some go to uh, home heating, uh, some go for export, and some go to the electricity uh, plants that burn it for elect to create electricity. Uh, I don't have all the details uh, on that particular proposal yet, but they have a long way to go through the regulatory process up in Franklin County. All right, so let's talk on the second topic, broadband. And it's funny, when people think of Hampshire County, and I know I've been guilty of this being newer to the area, you think of Northampton and Amherst, you've got these little hill towns that can't even get you know, access to the internet like you and I can get in a, in a bigger city. Sure. So how important is this basic internet access to these smaller hill towns? Yeah, it's critical. You start going up to towns like uh, Middlefield and Goshen and some of the smaller communities uh, in Hampshire County and throughout Western Mass, they do not have a quality, fast internet. Uh, and when I say they, I mean all the residents, all the people who work from home, which are substantial, uh, the schools, uh, the town hall itself. Uh, so it's really critical to bring uh, broadband to these communities and Mass Broadband did a great job in bringing it to some of the hub uh, areas within each community, the fire station, the town hall, the schools and uh, now people are working to try to bring that out to uh, the mass populations uh, but the, the savings that a town and a school can have now that they can access broadband they can start saving uh, with cloud-based features uh, they can start sharing software applications uh, so you're going to see some, some savings in municipal budgets, I think, as a result of the broadband if people can come together, work together, and find some creative solutions. And with this Mass Broadband 123 initiative, they're hoping that 97% of the residents will be on board with Internet access by 2017. 
Is that feasible? Is that possible? You think that's going to happen? That sounds high, but I hope it's possible. That's what they're saying, right? You can only hope so because internet is almost as needful of a necess necessity as food and water. Sad may be the case. In terms of economic development and the, the amount of people work from home uh, in some of the smaller communities in Hampshire County is quite substantial. So I definitely see a lot of those people uh, choosing uh, a broadband solution when it's brought to them. All right, so let's talk about some economic developments. What does Hampshire County have in store? Uh, well, I think Hampshire County is, is kind of in a renaissance mode. Uh, it's quite exciting. Uh, just recently, uh, it was given its own uh, regional tourism commission. Uh, so Hampshire County has always been linked with Hamden County and Springfield for tourism. And while those connections are still vitally important, uh, Hampshire County is now off on its own with its own visithampshirecounty.com website, its own branding, its own ad strategy, uh, and really highlighting the unique features uh, that are Hampshire County. It's the only uh, uh, county uh, in the Commonwealth that, isn't, that is surrounded by only Massachusetts communities. Uh, so it's really the heart of Massachusetts uh, and trying to bring more visitors here from Connecticut and Albany and Boston to see that I think is a great uh, move forward. About 5% of all jobs in Hampshire County are tourism related and I think you'll seeing that go uh, up in the near future. Uh, obviously the other critical part of Hampshire County is our agriculture and farming community. Uh, there's some great work going on on allowing the farmers to bring their product to more local institutions, schools, colleges, hospitals, really creating a market within the county, within Western Mass, for the very goods and services that we're creating out here from an agricultural point of view. I think those two things are, are really critical uh, for our economic uh, future. Exciting, very, very exciting. Thank you so much, Todd Ford from the Hampshire Council of Governments. Thanks for having me.